you had a question for me right now and you want to interject, you could do that. Whereas I don't think that was possible before with AI bots. So it seems like that technology has really, really come along um, in that aspect in more of a natural language. You can act like as a pirate, if you will, like you say, hey, say arc after each like sentence. You can, you can set it up in that way, right? Like the imagination is really the only like limit here. One thing that people might be concerned about when they hear sales GPT and AI salespeople is inevitably well, what about human salespeople? Are they going to take all of our jobs? First of all, thanks a lot, Ryan and Hunter, for having me on the show. It's always uh, exciting to meet people who are interested in AI. You know, I've been in the space since about 2015, and you know, at the time, it was uh, hardly possible to generate handwritten digits with these generative models. And you know, fast forward eight years, here we are, like just having flawless pictures being generated. We're on the cusp of generating videos. You know, we have like extremely good language understanding, text to speech, speech to text translation. So there is just like a so much cool development. But uh, basically, about me, um, I am, as you can hear from my accent, I'm not from around here. So I was born and raised in Prague, the Czech Republic, and came to the US around 2012 uh, to play squash. This small liberal arts school called Bates College. And I uh, actually, I was not a computer scientist major. I studied mathematics as well as uh, chemistry. I actually did my uh, thesis in quantum chemistry when I was shooting lasers at gold nanoparticles. And I decided I did not want to do a uh, PhD in quantum chemistry. So I actually ended up uh, being in consulting for a year, um, you know, just like you're kind of out of the school, uh, really, you know, vanilla uh, PowerPoint kind of, um, my monkey job, but uh, you know it was definitely a good learning experience. So see how business works, and then I ended up going back to graduate school uh, at Harvard when I got my master's in data science, and that's kind of I really started getting into the deep space in AI and been there ever since. Um, so I worked. Um, so my my kind of uh, educational background was focused on, on master's level was focused on AI bias and and fairness in machine learning. So that's kind of what I did my thesis on, and then I joined Fidelity Investments where I worked on recommendation systems. Um, so personalization in general is kind of the big bucket. Recommendation system is more like the machine learning uh, version of, of that problem. And so the way I always uh, explain this is, you know, if you have a set of users and set of items, you're trying to match up the items to those users. So what does that mean? So let's say you go to Netflix and uh, each person gets a personalized selection of the movies, the, the cards they get, like the, the carousel. Uh, you know, I would be somebody who's creating that system, which recommends you that selection of the movies. Or you go to Amazon.com and then you get a selection of products based on your past purchase history. That's also like a very similar problem. Uh, now the algorithms below the surface are different based on the use case, but kind of in general, like the idea is, you know, you're trying to recommend items to users who would like to like those items. Spotify is another example. And so I've worked at Fidelity for about three years. And after that, I uh, started dabbling in startups. Um, I actually was part of two uh, prop tech companies, one uh, sort of part time while I was still at Fidelity. Uh, and then the second one really after I've left uh, last summer, which was a, uh, a lending company where I served as a CTO. And we were basically creating a marketplace for, uh, for uh, real estate investors to connect them with sources of financing. Um, ultimately, the, the business was not growing as much as I wanted to. I feel like we couldn't really solve the cold start problem. And so around March, I really kind of decided to pause that venture and focus back to where my roots are, which is, you know, artificial intelligence and starting dabbling around uh, things to do and, you know, upskilling myself and like kind of just resuming the activities I did before, which is like AI research. And I, you know, created this project called LGBT, which, you know, which is why I also got invited to this show, um, which is a project I can talk about a bit more, but uh, that's sort of uh, what got me here. Uh, plus, I am working on a uh, early stage venture called Krusty AI. And at Krusty, we help businesses uh, scale revenue by allowing them to talk to their customers at scale. So you think, can think of like a sales GPT connected to a low latency scale, like scalable distributed infrastructure so that you can call to all of your customers. Yeah. Wow, what a background. <laughs> you got a Thank lot. You. Uh, if Fidelity, Fidelity, you're meaning like the investment platform, correct? Uh, Fidelity Investments, yes. So okay. it's a uh, okay. asset manager. Uh, yeah, it's it's a, one of the uh, largest asset managers in the United States. Yeah, yeah. Um, I use them a lot. But uh, 
just curious. So what are your thoughts? Is Fidelity, do you know if Fidelity is making like, I know Bloomberg has a Bloomberg GPT. Do you know if Fidelity is making something similar? Uh, I'm not aware of, of that. Um, okay. And, you know, I probably have stuff I'm covered under NDA still, which I can sure. talk about. But, um, you know, we did have a, a, like a large uh, data science, um, I would say, workforce. So we had a lot of data scientists working a lot of cool stuff, stuff uh, especially for me, I was in the uh, customer experience uh, marketing. So we basically made the uh, like the experience with like, Fidelity digital uh, better by you know building like a scalable recommendation systems for for our for our customers. Awesome. Okay. So before we get too uh, deep into the technical side of uh, Sales GPT, can you just give us a brief overview of what is Sales GPT? What's the vision of it? What's it look like? Yeah. So the vision behind Sales GPT is really to build like an autonomous uh, sales agent, which is fully open source. And can I, uh, can basically interact with you by any any channel, uh, written channel. So you can think of interacting with it by a text message. You can think of it interacting by web web plugin or any other means. Can be connected by email. And the vision is really to be able to fulfill the tasks of a sales uh, representative. But it is an AI agent. It is actually not a real human. But it can act as one and you know obviously we have the ethical concern has to disclose that is an ai for most of the use cases but basically the experience of uh you know interacting with it is extremely human like because it can understand you know what stage of the conversation especially in sales you're at it can react to your objections you know it can present solution where necessary it can, you know, schedule an appointment as a follow up or another call to action, whatever the actual user wants it to configure for. So, um, I guess in a nutshell, Sales GPT is a uh, is an open source uh, AI agent which can uh, basically hundred x your sales workforce. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what? I guess to to get a little bit behind the scenes a little bit. What does your tech stack look for something like that? Is it relatively simple? Or is it pretty complicated? Yeah, so we are leveraging basically the you know latest advances in generative AI, uh, where we have the access to foundational models. Right, uh, you can think of ChatGPT as like one of them, but there's other ones. You know, there's Anthropic, there is Cohere, there is like an, there's a Palm from Google, and basically um, the way Sales GPT is built is that you can swap any sort of brain, if you will, uh, to then to then power sales GPT. So as far as the stack goes, you know, we're using Langchain uh, to be able to do the orchestration of of the of the backend LLM, uh, as well as, uh, you know, from injections, uh, and then the agent actions, right. So like, basically, we have two modes for sales GPT, one is uh, just a pure conversation where you know, one of the main problems currently with LLMs is that they hallucinate, right? So they, they actually make stuff up. And uh, you can actually reduce that significantly by constraining it to only talk about your products. And that's kind of the example I have on our repo where, you know, the agent is only going to be referencing the products you have in your product catalog. And that's just like that running example I use with mattress selling agent, right? It's not going to sell you any mattress. It's just going to only sell you the mattress it has in the catalog. So that it can like look up information and just reference it there. Um, so I would say, as far as the repo itself, um, you know, it is not a uh, you know a scalable distributed infrastructure. Just kind of what we're building at Krusty, but it's like a really I would say like an example way people can use to build their own you know sales sales bots. And you know, we got over eight hundred fifty stars. People are like reaching out, opening issues, you know, creating it for their own use cases. I get a ton of inbound interest through these type forms I have put on the README where people, you know, are reaching out to use this from anything from like a Chinese, uh, you know, like a materials infra like manufacturer all the way to, you know, somebody contacted me uh, from a Dominican Republic call center. They wanted to automate a call center in the Dominican Republic. So, you know, you get uh, like a lot of people interested in this and like they come from all walks of life. So it's it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Now, how would the, like say if someone wanted to implement this at a call center, how would they go about, you, you have the back end technology for the conversation, but how does it, how do you hook it up to actually making the phone calls? 
Yeah, so that's kind of what, uh, for the phone calls, that's what we work at Krusty. So we have a, uh, again, the distributed low latency infrastructure, uh, which is kind of the, the the product we're selling here. And, you know, it is leveraging, like, obviously telecom providers. And then um, it has a bunch of, like, optimizations, which I worked on while I was doing quantum chemistry to basically do it, like, almost real time. Um, as far as, like, hooking it up in your environment as a chat agent uh, there is a you know many open source solutions to do that uh you know you can use like streamlit to create like a quick app uh which you can just power with sales gpt like there is like other I think conf stack or sales sales stack or some of these like there there are just like a bunch of these out of the box solutions you can connect it as a front end too okay now can you can you talk about you alluded to it at the beginning and um about crusty ai it sounds like they're two separate projects What's the, uh, as an overview, what is uh, Krusty AI and how does it relate to sales GPT? Yeah, so Krusty AI is a, uh, is a uh, early stage venture which helps businesses uh, with uh, a few, few, few key use cases which were not able to be solved before like the generative AI revolution. One of them is talking to all of their customers at scale. So you can imagine, right, like if you're a business with a bunch of leads in your CRM, you have a certain budget of who your salespeople can talk to, right? They're going to qualify, let's say, the top 10% and talk to them. With uh, with Krusty, you can actually talk to all of your leads and like really figure it out like who want, who is ready to be activated. So let's say you have three tier users. Let's say you are, you know, DocuSign or MailChimp or any other kind of company which is selling a product which is a few hundred dollars a month uh, or like a year even, right? And so those products are usually such a low contract point or they have a low margin such that it doesn't make sense to employ a salesperson to call all of them. Now that issue can actually be solved where you can literally talk to all of your customers at scale, hyper-personalize the offering to them and then upsell them to a paid tier. Um, so that's kind of what we focus on as the first budget market um, is upselling you know, B2B SaaS businesses, helping them upsell from free tier to a paid version, you know, help it onboarding and stuff like that. Uh, on the back end, we are leveraging sales GPT as the, as kind of the, the chat functionality, uh, but we do a bunch of optimization to obviously do that in a distributed fashion. And like, you know, we host and we are doing that low, low latency, um, as well as provide access to tools. Okay. Awesome. Now, have you ever, like, have you been on a call with uh, when one sales GPT GPT is at work and sort of over like listen to what's going on or like how does that work? I'm just curious on like how the actual interaction happens if you do not disclose that it's an AI bot and the the AI bot calls somebody. How does it usually go? Have you listened in on that and how does that work? Yeah, so I mean, from an ethical standpoint, uh, when you do an outbound call, you are supposed to disclose that it is an AI calling. It's not a regulation which is signed yet, but for example, in the OpenAI terms of service, you actually have to disclose to a human that they're they're interacting with AI. Uh, it's actually part of the TOS. So if you're doing outbound call, uh, if you're doing inbound, the user is you know already opted in and they know that they're calling an AI. So you don't necessarily have to say then because you're like you know the person is kind of expecting that. Um, so those are the two uh, you know inbound outbound. And uh, I would say, yeah, like, I mean, like, it's a visceral, it's a visceral feeling where, you know, you're talking to AI, but it doesn't sound like an AI, right? Like, it doesn't sound like, it sounds like an actual human, you know, you have certain emotions, it can like really react to you, what you're saying, you know, it is, it is there, it is like, it is listening to you. So, um, yeah, I would say, you know, there is going to be a crossing the chasm kind of thing where people who are, you know, let's say, in the early 2000s, we're not, not as comfortable paying with a credit card online, right? They might probably not be as willing to talk to AI uh, at this point. And we're going to have other people who are more, you know, advanced uh, in technology adoption curve. And so those, you know, they, they might not have a problem with that. Now, as we, are, as we are, like, you know, raising a new generation, you know, those who grew up on social media, now we're going to have people who grew up with AI agents just being around them, right? It's not going to be even a, even a problem for them talking to an AI. So, you know, I think definitely there's going to be an adoption curve, uh, but like, you know, you have so many companies or so many, you have like a few other players uh, in the various parts of the 
kind of the AI voice ecosystem, right? Like the notable ones, you have character AI, you have the um, stability AI and all of these like kind of companion, uh, AI companion companies are creating these use cases where you can actually talk to your AI. And, you know, I think we are just in that start of that adoption curve and it's just going to get more and more prevalent as we go. Awesome. And how, how does, so when the call is made, how is it disclosed? Is there some, like right away, is that the first sentence that comes out of the recording, um, for lack of a better word? Yeah, so it's not recording uh, really because it generates the, uh, you know, everything what it says on the fly. So it's mm -hmm. it has the ability to basically react to what you're saying because, again, it's not recorded, it's generated, right? So, like, it's it's generating a speech as I'm generating speech talking to you in a way, gotcha. right? Uh, in a streaming in a streaming way, um, you know, it can say things like, "Hey, you know, this is this is John. I'm an AI assistant from XYZ company. I'm talking to you to talk about talk about X. You sign up for this product, Y. You know, and and we'd love to talk to you about like how these uh, additional features can help you or like what problems are you facing in your business." Okay, it seems like that's like yeah. like you said, it's going to take time for people to be to to pick up the phone. And hear that it's like, oh, this is an AI AI salesperson to be comfortable with that. It's just going to take time because right away, I, I would think a lot of people would hang up if they hang up with regular sales calls. They're probably going to hang up right now, but maybe that will take care of itself. And there's probably workarounds from that as well to maybe have some giveaways or something like that. When you, you know, if you if I picked up and uh, an AI sales agent is on the phone, and he's like, I'm an AI sale, sales agent, but I'll give you 30 percent off of what I'm about to tell you, maybe that keeps them on for a little yeah. longer or something like that. Yeah, I remember like I'm not really focusing on the kind of aggressive sales use cases. It's mm -hmm. more about like the person already knowing they're going to be talking to an AI. So for example, it's somebody who's on a free tier and they would like to understand how the paid subscription is going to help them, right? You can either go to the FAQ pages or you can wait 30 minutes in the phone call center for somebody to talk to you, or you can talk to an AI right away who can help solve your problem, right? Uh, so it's all about okay. aligning the incentives of the person and expectations, right? So you will not get tricked about talking to AI, right? Most of these use cases are actually inbound where, you know, like the person will call the AI in and will want to get their problem solved. So, I mean, there's still so going to be an adoption curve, but. It's almost like a help desk as well. For what sales GPT is, in a way, what it can be. In a, in, 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 it can be, yes. Like as far as mm -hmm. the call, calling solution, 100%. Um, I would say that like, you know, that's kind of the way, main use case. The other one is like, you know, you go to a e-commerce website and like within five minutes of placing your order, like you can also click a box, hey, I would like to talk about you know, my order with like an AI agent who can help me do what X, Y, Z. Now that's going to take some time, but you can imagine that like, if you have a very specific question or like a very specific business, you would like to talk to somebody, right? About it. Like you might not find it in FAQs, um, you know, and like, if you have a low margin business, you might either talk to somebody who is, you know, sitting somewhere, you know, overseas uh and like you know they might not necessarily know what's going on or they just kind of like a more like a support here you should actually talk to something which is very knowledgeable about a product like it's always there and it's ready to help you so as far as like the calling solution yeah and you know we can drop in the link for the landing page but we can check it out i have like a video but i mean maybe we can just uh kind of go back to like the sales gpt uh repo which is you know a bit it's connected, but it's uh, it's sort of like a different focus, right? Like on the sales GPT repo, you have you focus on the chat functionality and really just like configuring the brain, if you will. So maybe we can just like linger on that a little bit, since I think that was the main point of the invitation today. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah. I wanted I wanted to ask. <clears throat> so you said you can do it through. What are all the channels that it's able to do it from? You said text, uh, call. You can do email. What, was there was yeah. there other one or? Yeah. So I I've seen. So I've seen people uh, wanting to integrate it to a multiple uh, channels uh, as far as sales GPT goes, right? Like, and we have everything under the sun. We have text, we have uh, email, we have like uh, HubSpot action tasks. We have like Salesforce integrations. There's WhatsApp. It's a big one, right? Especially out of the US. Facebook Messenger or like Instagram Messenger, as well as uh, uh, what's the Chinese one? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm slipping. Uh, the, the Chinese WeChat. messaging app. WeChat. I can't yes, that one. Okay. WeChat. 
WeChat, okay. yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, you have everything under the sun, right? Like, and these are not coming from me. These are from the users of the repo who are contacted me. And they're like, hey, I'm doing this for that, right? Like, I'm interested right. in applying in this, in this use case, so, yeah. So I'm assuming, like you said, it's very uh, human-like interaction. So I'm assuming there's some sort of, like, persona that's giving off, given off by this, this uh, sales GPT. Uh, do they get to, does the user get to customize that at all? Or, you know, it, with a voice, what kind of voice tools do you use? Something like that. How does that work? Yeah, so um, the customization that comes like directly into sales GPT prompting. So, you know, it's kind of similar if you are like talking to chat GPT in like the actual like UI of chat, chat GPT. You know, most people just have like an interaction with it when they ask it a question, you know, they want to solve a problem. Uh, what is kind of the next level is you can actually prepare what's called a system prompt. And that's come directly, like you can look it up in like LangChain documentation and in this system prompt, basically you like constrain the LLM to do what you want to the best of your ability. So like, it's usually like a longer prompt and you can see that in the configuration file on sales GPT, right? Like you have some custom made prompt and it's telling it, Hey, your name is, you know, Rachel and you work for sleep Haven. And then this is your business. And then this is what like you're selling. This is the reason why a person is calling you or you're calling them. And then this is like all of the stages of the conversation, right? So you basically prompt it all out and that's something a user can, um, can like actually change you can tell it hey like i want to react in this way so like you know you can you can act like as a pirate if you will like you say hey say arc after each like sentence you can mm -hmm. you can set it up in that way right like the imagination is really the only like limit here because it's just such a general like you know like general purpose uh, foundational models which were built uh, so that you know train on the entirety of the internet so you can like really use them in a, in a way you you would like the the follow-up was about um that's a really good answer i like that that was a really good explanation uh the follow-up was what kind of uh voice generation tools are you oh using? the voice tones yeah so you know there is a number of providers in the uh voice generation space you have like play hd you have 11 labs you have like a um, bunch of bunch of other ones like you know Meta has released uh, AudioCraft uh, recently, which is a uh, just kind of like a music and like just voice like a noise generation one. They have VoiceBox, which is actually not open source. Um, you know, and there's like a bunch of other ones. This Bark, you know, there is like a number of these you can use and and and, and customize for your own liking. Okay, and then you said you get to pick the LLMs too, right? So, so yes, are, absolutely. Are there are there some that perform better than others as far as sales and overcoming objections, things like that, that you found? Yeah, so least? I mean, that would be great if that would be great if somebody could like benchmark that and let me know. I have not actually done like the the benchmarking of like which foundation model is better performant in general. Uh, you know, you would like to get you would like the foundational model to have access to data related to sales. So I could imagine that google palm model and that's just like my you know conjecture like i have not proven it or anything but like it might actually work better because it has access to all of this like you know like e-commerce data which which open AI might not have right uh right. like everything which is from their ecosystem from like a closed databases which they can use to train their foundation model which somebody like open AI might not have access to right um right. so i think like google has like a huge advantage in that sense um, in the same way, like, you know, if you have Elon Musk trying to build something very conversational, like Twitter style bot, right, with them, with, 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 with Elon basically constraining the um, closing out their API and not really allowing like third parties to, to, to train, you know, on that, they might get that advantage. So basically, it really comes down to what data sets you have available to, to, uh, to building your foundation model. Uh, the second one is budget. Obviously, we're still at a point where we do have like open source models. Uh, you know, Llama version two is now the state of the art in the open source, but it's still lacking behind the closed source component, uh, just because the size as well as the the sheer volume of data it can be trained on. Okay, so does it cost to use right now, or does it just cost uh, due to the LLM you're using? Well, so Cell GPT is 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 uh, is an open source GitHub project. Anybody can clone it, install it, and then just use. Like you know, it is a free to use. Um, 
under MIT license. Um, however, for like connecting into LLM, you either have to train your own or like just spin up your own, host your own, which you can do now, right? Like with things like quantization and like running on a local machine, you can actually spin up like a smaller mo model. Um, but if you're using like an API key from OpenAI, for example, yes, you have to pay for that. Gotcha. So what's what's been the biggest complication to the development of sales GPT? What would you say is the biggest complication right now? I mean, I would say it's any. time. It's a time, right, component. Like, uh, I would love to get people, uh, like other developers who would like to contribute to the repo. I have like a bunch of, like I have a ton of stars and ton of issues, but, uh, you know, people using it for their own apps. Uh, not that many people actually contribute back to the open source. So, you know, I, I do have like a running to-do list of things I would like to improve, but um, I think other hands, like other developers who would like to help making this better for everybody. Um, and obviously they can like use that project as on the resume or like if they wanted to build their own apps, right? Like they can, they can do that. Um, this is sort of like the backbone for building these things. And on a, it's built on Langchain, right? So you can probably build a similar thing on Langchain, except this is more like, I think, sales specific. So if somebody's looking for like a sales specific use case, uh, this is like more suited towards that. It can give you like a better examples, better understanding of what's needed. So like what's, what's one big improvement you'd like to make or that you would need help with right now that you, you wish you could just like get that done? <laughs> Yes, I think right now the uh, as I talked about usage of tools, um, you know, it's not always hundred percent bulletproof, and the reason for that is you're actually relying on the formatting of the LLM out. So, like, let's say if you want like a certain output, you want it to say certain things so that you can parse the string coming out. Uh, it's actually not always as uh, robust. Now, there is one way to to, uh, to get around it, and that's using OpenAI functions, which actually like the main uh, or the functions, like uh, just in general. And the, the the actual difference there is that there's a guarantee you will always get a JSON back. Mm -hmm. So that like, even if your result is not, um, it's not what you want, it will not break the flow of the code because like, you know, you'll get a JSON back versus if you're just relying on a, you know, a thought action, observation pattern, right? Which is kind of what, what the React uh, the React framework is, what, what people use is one of the early, early uh, agent um, frameworks. If you don't get the thought React observation uh, framework out of the LLM, you know, you can break your flow. So that's actually one of the, the pieces which is on the to do is to make it more robust. It can be open AI functions, could be something else, but yeah, improving the, the the functionality of the agent in that sense. Have you seen any examples of uh, people using the project uh, in real life right now that actually have helped their business or created created any kind of basic sales for them? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I have over 100 people who reach out to me on the Typeform channels uh, mm -hmm. and they're all like using it for their business, right? Like anything from a Gmail integration to like uh, a WhatsApp agent. I think those are the, the two most popular use cases. Um, and yeah, like they're using it to improve, improve their, their sales process, sales pipeline. And, you know, uh, where I am plugging in a bit crusty is kind of like white labeling that, that, uh, calling solution. So we are building our own front end and ability to, you know, um, sort of help with your like customization. Uh, but you can also do it yourself with sales GPT. Right. And, and then, then like, if you want calling, that's kind of where we plug in with crusty. Um, but yeah, like definitely, I mean. People are using it actively, you know, I mean, it's, it's about 140 forks on that project. So like, you know, wow. I'm sure that like there's, there's people who from there you, you are, who are using it for their own business. And, uh, you know, um, obviously like it's a sales thing. People want to build products out of it. It would be great if some of them want to also bring a little PR back to contribute back, uh, to the open source. So this is a little, little nudge there. No, you're definitely a hot project. I think that's how I found you guys is on the uh, GitHub trending projects because uh, you're like you. It sounds like you have a lot of stars and, and forks. So that's awesome. Congrats on getting this far. Um, Thank you. Yeah. What? Uh, so you you mentioned a little bit. Well, let me for I've got a couple more couple questions. Um, but for the crusty AI, is that sort of just to clarify for the for the everyday user, crusty is going to be sort of the like you said the white label the interface if you want to use sales GPT in the cloud, um, for example. And if you want to use sales GPT locally, you can just clone the GitHub repo and use it locally however you wish. 
Is that sort of the ten, basic 10,000 foot overview? Do I have that right? S sort of. I would say yeah. uh, Krusty is the uh, sales GPT powered uh, voice sales agent, which can talk to you over the phone. So it's more suited towards the voice like conversation uh, than the mm -hmm. chat. And then the basically the value at there is that you don't have to build your own scalable low latency infrastructure uh, and it's all managed for you. And you can prepare your agents with sales GPT, like the prompting, the way the brain interacts, right? Like the responses you're gonna get is gonna be the same, but you can do that all at scale with like additional optimizations and like the ability to basically call and, and have that all managed for you. So yeah, so it is the uh, it is the calling uh, calling solution, calling complement uh, to the uh, to the open source. And are you the? I think you mentioned it early, very at the very beginning of the podcast, but. Are you the co-founder of Krusty AI or what's your role at Krusty? Yeah, I'm, I'm a co-founder at Krusty, okay. that's right. All right, awesome. And what was your, like, why did you feel the need to do sales? Is there a reason, like, it sounds like your background's in marketing a little bit as well from the companies you worked at. So is that sort of how it translated yeah, into you making Yeah, Yeah, so computational, computational marketing, right, was one of the, mm -hmm one of like the uh, previous, I guess, roles, like at Fidelity, I, I would say it's mostly computational marketing, right? Like personalization, you know, at scale, like, you know, we were serving recommendations for like 30 million plus users at scale, right? So you had like these wow. massive, massive <laughs> systems, uh, basically, right? So um, yeah, like I'd say like the problem I'm solving, you know, with sales GPT is just um, the ability to Okay, so like the ability to qualify leads, like in my previous business, when it was a lending business, um, you know, the way we were sourcing our customers were through Facebook uh, groups for real estate. So you can imagine you have like Oregon real estate investors, right? And you have a bunch of people there and a bunch of people looking for loans. So we would contact them because our value proposition was like, hey, get a selection of loans without paying the broker fee. Now, there's going to be a bunch of like issues with that. Like people don't trust us because we reach out to them for Facebook. They don't know our brand, right? But the main thing was that I got on all of these phone calls with people who were not qualified to purchase. So like I would spend all this time talking to these leads who were not actually leads because they were not actually ready to take, to, to like buy a real estate, do a deal, right? Like do a fix okay. and flip or like buy and hold. And so I spent all this time talking to the people who were actually not customers, right? They were not qualified buyers. So, you know, I think a part of like creating sales GPT was for me to address this problem is like, can we create something which can address like the big problem of like spending all of this time and money of qualifying leads, right? Because I was sort of like a salesperson too on my previous startups, right? Like you wear all of the hats if you're early, right? You build a product, you do the marketing, you do hiring, but you also do the sales. And if you have people wasting your time in the sales process, that's really not, no early stage founder wants to be in that position, right? So I'd say like subconsciously, that was the reason why I chose this, this, uh, this thing. But it's also like a very exciting because now you like kind of in a way of human computer interaction where, um, you know, this thing can actually like have a real conversation, right? Like previous systems for robotic, you know, they're kind of like really heavy to use, you know, like clumsy and, and clunky. But now you're like actually with the current technology. And that, by the way, is just not just LLMs. It's the very, very good speech recognition models, which have been built in the last two or three years, as well as the speech generation models, which were built in the last few years. And those combined with the LLMs allow, you know, Krusty to exist. Um, and for cell GPT, you know, uh, the LLM itself, kind of a core brain, that's kind of the reason why it can exist. Okay. Yeah, we re we uh, interviewed Real Char uh, last, last week. Uh, Sean Wee is the founder. Um, yeah. he did a little demo for it for us and it was pretty, it's pretty incredible. Like how good it's gotten. Like he has a, he has a care, like he has characters like Elon Musk and, uh, other, other celebrities, um, that you can talk with in real time and he, you can do it via a phone call or a chat. And the one thing that stood out that has gotten really good other than the voice that doesn't sound robotic is he was demoing that the conversation, like they would interrupt each other, like mid sentence. It wasn't like someone would ask a question and the, and the AI bot would answer. And then you'd wait for the AI bot, bot to answer. Someone would interject the AI bot and his technology was able to pick up the conversation like a human would. Like, um, you know, if you had a question for me right now and you want to interject, you could do that. Whereas I don't think that was possible before with AI bots. So it seems like that technology has really, really come along um, in that aspect in more of a natural language type of 
um, nat nat natural communication type process. Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's definitely a big part of, you know, solving for the interruptions and then uh, just understanding like end of speech, right? The recognition, mm -hmm. that's another big one to reduce latency. So all, yes, these are definitely very important points. Cool. So, um, so one thing that people might be concerned about when they hear sales GPT and AI salespeople is inevitably, well, what about human salespeople? Are they going to take all of our jobs? Um, how do you address that concern? Yeah. So, I mean, there's definitely, you know, a question which comes up and, uh, like you can think of like any sort of like technology, uh, driven transition, right? Like people didn't want cars. They wanted faster horses, right? Like then you had Henry Ford. Um, I think here we're going to see basically an elevation in productivity, right? That's ultimately what this is about. This is not about like, you know, what AI can do. This is about, okay, what can we do as like society, right? Like we want to grow GDP, we want to grow, you know, the overall output. And like, I think that this ultimately allows us to do that. Now, there is like short-term concerns about like job replacement. Um, but I think what you're going to see is that like, you know, you're going to have massive reskilling, upskilling, and ultimately like a greater, greater abundance, right? So I think, you know, when you are positioning this as like helping the existing salespeople of like a one salesperson can have a job of 10, now you're like really, you know, putting a downward pressure on the cost of, of like doing a certain job, which will, you know, increase the productivity of people who are there. But ultimately you will always need a human in the loop, right? Like I'm not talking about like replacing a salesperson. I'm talking about like, Hey, like I can help you set an appointment so you can talk to a real person kind of really reduce the things which are, which sucks about like doing sales, like for example, doing cold calling, if it makes sense, or just doing the lead qualification or additional kind of uh, things, which, which sucks as a salesperson. So like, are we like, that's kind of like that, that, you know, that, that doomsday scenario, oh, we're going to like be all replaced by AI. I think we're not there yet. We're not going to be there yet, even with the current systems, right? Like you're going to have like productivity improvements. And I think the pace of change will be gradual. Like, yes, like we'll have to reskill up scale certain, certain, you know, certain job types will not be here anymore. We'll have to have, we'll create new job types, right? Like we might not need typewriters anymore because we can like record, you know, uh, like automatically you don't need typewriters anymore, right? So like, that's kind of like a transition I see uh, where it, it's like, hey, like we can have self-driving cars, you know, Uber drivers will have, uh, will have no jobs anymore. Like that kind of thinking, like, you know, it's, it's something which is happening on a macro level, but I think it's happening uh, gradually enough so that people can can adjust and, and kind of you know get used to it yeah it seems like uh, like when we go back to the sale like uh, real estate sales you know the, if uh, a realtor wouldn't have to reach out and qualify leads for example they could build their business or make something but like they don't have to deal with that low-lying fruit so they can maybe expand their business or scale their business in better ways so I don't know that argument about it, like replacing their job. Maybe it just makes their job better and they can, it makes their business better ultimately because they're, they're more freed up with things. It's like, you know, absolutely. If you, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like ultimately in every business you're selling to people, right? So like there needs to be mm -hmm. a value proposition for somebody to, to buy your product. And, you know, I think that's kind of like what, what it is here is that you're like improving a, like productivity of the existing people working for that business. Yeah, and to be clear, I wasn't saying that that is the case. I'm just saying that's an no, absolutely no. That's definitely like a valid. Yeah, that's a valid. <laughs> uh, that's a valid comment, right? Like that's something yeah. you know, you get a lot of automation in general. Yeah, yeah, and I think it, it, you know, kind of like Ryan said, I think it frees people up to be able to uh, allocate their time and and not necessarily more important that those things are very important, uh, but things that require that upskilling and creativity that they might. Uh, be able to contribute to more uh, to advance Absolutely. the project. Uh, so um, you mentioned like the sky is the limit, you know, it's kind of like the innovation, you know, the imagination kind of determines what's going to be done with this project. Do you see any other limits to the project right now? Um, or, is, or is it basically just kind of up to the human imagination and what the developers are willing to, to do? I mean, like, look, it is an open source project, right? So like, it doesn't actually have like the product uh, reliability or like, you know, any, any sort of like, you can't just like drop this and like use this as a, pro as, 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 as a product, right? Like you just have to do like the additional work to, to put that in a product. Like ultimately, GPT is showing you how to do certain things, how to 
create a sales agent, uh, autonomous sales agent, it doesn't doesn't give you all of the stuff you need around building like actual product, right? Which is like, oh, you need authentication, like user management, you know, all of this stuff, which is kind of creating an like, actual product is not there. So, you know, um, it's more meant to, you know, in a, a company which might have something, building something and you just drop it in a part of their workflow, right? I don't know if you kind of familiar with the uh, traditional machine learning cycle, which is probably changing too, but like, let's say in the last 10, 15 years, when you're creating a AI AI product, the AI is like a little piece there. And then you have like the entire like infrastructure mm -hmm. around it, right? Like everything from like a data injection, you know, data management, like training, serving, inference, security, you know, quality of the output, like all of that stuff around it needs to exist. So, you know, I think that I've heard this interesting uh, comment. Uh, I was listening to this podcast called No Priors and like it's with Sarah Guo and she was talking about how like um, not that many companies actually have LLMs in production yet because like um, that's what I'm talking about. Like you get to a demo stage, but to go to that like production level system, you actually have a ton of stuff on top of that. So, you know, that's kind of where we are. Like I think I'll, I'll continuously like to Im improve the core okay. concepts there. Like allow you to talk to it by terminal and doing all of that, or maybe like have like a little chat there. But yeah, I think like, you know, the time uh, spent on this project and then uh, and have, having contributions from others would be super helpful. Do you have a, a team of developers right now? And if so, how many? Like how many people are working on this project every day? I mean, sales GPT, that's just my effort, right? It's under my personal name on GitHub and I GitHub handle. So I was the one who was developing all of that. I have a few advisors on who help me with sort of like the, uh, the infrastructure as well as like, um, you know, like concepting, um, as far as Krusty goes, I have a small team of, of, uh, of folks who are helping me out with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the startup there, but, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very small team, you know, we are definitely yeah. like an early stage startup. Yeah. And are you guys, uh, if you don't feel like answering this question, that's totally fine. Are you guys VC funded or are you looking for funding or how, um, how are you funding Krusty at least? Uh, so yeah, it's, it's currently, uh, it's currently not, uh, not VC funded yet. Um, mm -hmm. we are definitely open to that. Um, you know, but we already have like paying customers. So like, you know, awesome. we sort of are not in a, in a, in a huge like, I guess time crunch, like obviously would be nice to grow faster. And, you know, I'm definitely open to taking some conversations, uh, but we're not actively, you know, raising uh, right now. Um, I think that might become more relevant as time goes on in the next, you know, month or two. Uh, we'll see how things go. But uh, yeah, like it's, you know, the sales GPT plus like, uh, like the open source I uh, plus Krusty is the closed source sort of like call level calling infrastructure cluster uh, where that's where we get like our traction and it's been it's been a wild ride you know I I have been very very busy <laughs> I bet I mean you how long you, how long has it been since you launched it hasn't been long at all right uh, no so the, the 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 beta has been out for about the month uh, like cell GPT okay. open source repo has been out for about you know, three or four months right now, I think mm -hmm. like end of, end of April. So it's like what, like three and a half months or so, uh, since the first commit. And then for the crusty, you know, I literally just put up the landing page, I think like last week or something. Um, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you're on the right track. I mean, it looks, it's an incredible project. It makes me want to like go find out what to sell after this <laughs> podcast, <laughs> you know, and test it out. Yeah. So, very yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, we can start with mattresses. There we go. Mattresses. Hey, everyone needs one, right? So <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's the but the product market fit, right? Yeah. So what is your uh what potential risks do you see for this project? Do you see any potential risks that need to be addressed? Yeah, I mean like I think one thing is I was gonna say for sales GPT in general, but you could also talk about Krusty if you want. Uh yeah, so I think for sales GPT is just the um ability to get like other developers to help out on features and just make it like an open source versus just like one man show, right? Like, or like my, my team kind of show. Um, the other thing is like to continue being useful, I think as like an educational tool, uh, like continuing to push out like latest like concepts and, you know, 
like paradigms because that thing moves very very fast right so like the initial stuff which was there since may might be a little bit outdated already right like there's new better ways to do prompting and do like you know how to set up these agents and stuff like that so like keeping it i think current it's it's a challenge um especially when you are you know volunteering it's open source repo right so like i'm not monetizing so gpt so like you know it's just like there for anybody free to use and i'm doing that because like it's a great like visibility and also like it's a great like learning experience for me to learn what people need in terms of like ai and sales right so it's it's actually a great way to learn about about what people need um so yeah i think yeah like staying current uh finding time to pushing out new new uh new functionality and 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 hopefully finding other folks who want to uh you know submit some prs and make this project better so do you think um so I was going to say is where do you see this project uh, going in the future? What's what's the long term vision for the project? Yeah, so I think it's so in the, as as I stated in the readme of the of the GitHub repo, like we want to make it really like an open source sales agent. Anybody can like drop in into their workflow and like power their you know little sales chatbot or like another like customer service chatbot. Now there's going to be companies who are going to be obviously selling that as a product. So, you know, they all definitely have more time making it better. But I think it's just like it lifts all of the boats, if you will, uh, like in terms of understanding how these things work and what they can be used for. So I really like to think about sales GPT as like increasing your imagination, like, you know, horizons, basically pushing the boundaries of what you can do with these sales agents. And then you can kind of go on your own and then like improve it, adjust it, you know, and, and make it work uh, for your business or use case. Cool. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. It was probably like five or 10 years ago now, but I remember seeing a tool. It wasn't a tool that you'd hire human beings to do this for you, but they would make sales calls for you. And then you would pay for every um, conversion, right? So if someone sold a mattress, you'd pay them $50 because they sold the mattress for you. And it was sort of like automated. I don't think it ever took off, but it was VC funded and it was a really cool idea. Um, it sounds like this can sort of be that if it, if you if you or whoever's using it wanted to, to say, okay, here's my product. We're going to pay, you pay us every um, for every sale you get. Um, have you thought about doing something like that? You mean if it sells GPT or with Krusty or, or both? Yeah, with, or... I guess with the, either one. It sounds like Krusty would be more uh, applicable in this situation, but... I yeah, I mean, sales GPT, right, is like, again, open source project, which mm -hmm. anybody can use for whatever the purpose they want. With Krusty, I am doing KYC. So, like, each uh, each uh, user we, we get on, like, has to basically certify that they're going to be, like, compliant with, like, the regulations, which is, like... You know pewc which is prior express written consent so like you can't just like mass spam people right like being ethical is like really important to me and so like we don't want to mass spam like people and that's like one of those things where you see like let's say on linkedin when people talk about ai sales agents it's like oh my god we're gonna have like 100 million agents like you know basically like your phone becomes unusable right and right. so you know that's that's like the edge case which you know you you don't want to be down uh in that in that in that hole so uh, you know, what's important for us at Krusty is to like really make sure that like all of the use cases people want to like support with us are like, you know, legit and they're, like they're like within the regulatory boundaries. So usually that means if you're doing outbound calls that you have to have a prior expressed uh, consent, uh, con consent from the uh, person you're calling and you have to prove to us that you have it. Got it. Okay. By like a that sign up sense. sheet or something, right? Like yeah, if you mail yeah. chimp, they ha they're doing a similar KYC as well, right? Like if mm -hmm. with Mailchimp platform, you're also technically not supposed to mass email people you don't you have not who had not opted in, right? So like you sort of want to have the best practices in marketing. So like right now, you could someone could get back to the qualified leads thing. They could spend money on Facebook ads, get some qualified leads, and then at that point make the call correct. Um, because they've game, opted yes. in at that point. Okay, exactly. Yes, that's correct. Got it. And, and you mentioned that Krusty does more phone calls. Sales GPT can do a whole slew of different things. Are you mm -hmm. are planning on making like a UI interface for that for Sales GPT, like the emails and HubSpot and things like that? Yeah, I mean, like absolutely, right? Like, um, I think the purpose of the project is to again lift all boats and like help people really learn about like autonomous AI sales agents. Like, it's less. Uh, 
the point is less to be a product, like which would mean creating all of these yeah, integrations and like, you know, kind of creating like a product out of that. Because, you know, again, like I'm not monetizing sales GPT, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm helping people understand how to build AI sales agents. And so I don't want to put it behind a paywall and like, you know, just have people pay for like these integrations, right? That's where like maybe Krusty will come down the line one day. Uh, right now we're focused on phone calls, but I want like, you know, uh, sales GP to, to continue to be a, you know, truly open source, like autonomous AI sales agent. So, so yeah, like basically long story short, I don't have a bandwidth to create these integrations uh, for this open source project, right? Like if there is like interest from others to contribute with that. I would love that. But again, like, I think that's just not the core of the project and it's not in the spirit of, of creating a product out of that. That's yeah. for the developers well, and users to do. Right. You only have so much time on your hands. I mean, you got, you're running a lot of things. So I hear you. Exactly. Well, was there any, I wanted to ask, was there anything else about sales GPT or cross the AI that you want to, to share with us? Um, want to respect your time too, because you are a busy guy. <laughs> I think we had scheduled for what, like Ryan, an hour till four yeah, or something. So, yeah, uh, yeah, so, absolutely. Um, I mean, like I can drop you guys a link for the closed beta uh, sign up for, uh, for Krusty. And you know, I'm always looking for early design partners as well as like early customers who want to use this for their opted in leads use cases. So, I mean, that's probably not for the audience of this podcast, since I know we have uh, mostly developers and data scientists, but I do have a few small businesses who have found me through GitHub and who are actually using it as a white labeled solution to power their, you know, their, their lead qualification, uh, use cases. So, uh, while we are continuing to build the front end experience. So yeah, definitely, uh, sign up for a closed beta and then would love to work with you. Or if you have, uh, any ideas how to improve sales GPT, like we're open for PRs and, you know, we'll give you a shout out and you'll be able to contribute to like an almost thousand stars project, which I think is good for every developer's resume. Awesome. Absolutely. Do you have any other, I mean, this is a time where you have any other kind of promotions or, or um, links or where to find you, any of that, what, what, go ahead, feel free to promote yourself as much as you need to. <laughs> yes. You can find us at crusty.ai. So at C R U S T Y dot AI. Um, and then the GitHub project is just sales GPT. Uh, you can find it on GitHub. Um, and then, the, you know, it's collected. The video of the Krusty is actually in GitHub uh, README. So you can click on that, get to our Loom page, see the video, or get directed to our landing page. So that's far, as far as uh, open facing we are. Um, if you are in the Angelo pre seed uh, stage uh, investors and you would like to join our mission, you know, I'm. I am not actively raising, but I can take uh, meetings as it makes sense and uh, basically figure out if it, if it would make sense to work together. So, and we're also building our early team. So, you know, for people who would like to join us at Krusty or like to help with sales GPT, you know, my email is always open at philip at Krusty .ai. Very cool. All right. Well, we want to thank you for coming on. If you could hang on for just a second after we, we end the recording, that'd be helpful. Uh, but, Sounds uh, good. Yeah, you could also follow, um, be sure to, to, to do that. Check out the GitHub, um, check out their crusty.ai website. You can check out Ryan and I's newsletter, fry-ai.com. You can subscribe there. We have a subscriber base of, I think it's closing in 15,000, just growing. Um, so it, it's fun. The fry AI, the fries are just for fun. So, because Ryan's daughter likes French fries. So... That's basically it. Nothing no more to it. We just, just want to uh, share AI news in a fun, easy to read way. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, thanks, Philip, for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much.